Hello everyone. Today I believe is day 70. Seems like forever. And it seems like just yesterday. My main focus today is the bag that's behind me, which is from the Council on Aging. So I will get to that in just a moment. Um, fun facts before that. Uh, my hair looks like a little flower fan thing, whatever. But what I learned after nearly four weeks post-op <laughs> is that when I'm bending my hair forward or bending my head forward to go into the ponytail, it's a lot easier to make a ponytail that's way high up than it is the ones I've been trying to make, which are either in the middle of the head, my head or down at the bottom as a bun. Because if you lift your head forward or tip your head forward, your hands touch the front of your head before they touch the back. You would think after having a master's degree, I would be able to figure out that kind of physics, but nope, just figured that out about 10 minutes ago. So that's how my hair's on the top of my head. And uh, looking back, that would have been helpful to know a month ago when I was laying in bed, like after surgery, <laughs> that if I, put, if I put my head back, it still won't get squashed because my hair is so high. Whatever, I know now, I guess. Uh, other things, I tried to be normal today. Um, I had several Zoom doctor's appointments that were helpful. Um, but because I had so many of them, it kind of brought me back to what would life be like if I went back to my regular life before all this stuff happened, um, you know, with momming and working and all of that stuff. So a very brief HR lesson for you. Um, I do HR for my job. Uh, federally in the U.S., they offer a Family Medical Leave Act um, where you can take, you know, time off that way, but your company has to have more than 50 employees in order to qualify for that. Um, there are several states, including Massachusetts, that offer a paid family medical leave um, for companies that have less than 50 employees. Um, the thing is that when you decide, well, it's not you deciding, when your doctor decides, and that's pretty much the plastic surgeon, um, at least their office, about how much time you're gonna need off of work, that decision is made either before surgery or slightly after surgery, but the point is it's made before you really know how you're healing. And now I'm at the point where, um, so originally my leave was for six weeks and, that, and I'm at the four week point right now. And if you want to extend that leave, it has to get done two weeks before the original leave is over. I know it sounds confusing, but the point was for me that I'm at that place now. So going back to work in two weeks for me, um, I can't foresee that happening. I'm not even driving yet, first of all. Um, and the main thing is that my right arm is not really usable. And when you're typing a lot, um, it doesn't work. If you're typing stuff that's all words, it could work for you because you can use like voice to text or speech things, whatever. Um, when you're dealing with spreadsheets and numbers, that gets more complicated. So what I will say, if you're watching this and you are just going through the process or in the middle of the process, whatever, keep in mind that when you take your leave, you have to decide before your leave is actually over, um, you know, how you're progressing with your doctor, obviously, and what that looks like and consider deadlines of when you need to let your employer know and when you need to let, um, uh, whatever state or federal thing you're going by, letting them know if you're making a change. So for me, like I have to let them know by tomorrow <laughs> um, if I'm sticking with the six weeks or if it's going to be longer. And by the time you're watching this, I will have already told, you know, the powers that be. Um, but because of several reasons, there's no way I can go back to work at the original six weeks like I was thinking that I could or like they thought that I could. Um, they put me on a two-week timeout to rewind and get back on pain meds to get things under control. So that automatically pushes it back by two weeks. And the reality right now is I'm not driving and I'm not able to use my arms. Um, <laughs> I can't lift more than five pounds. I tried today typing. I did some emails or whatever. Um, nothing even in long duration. But as I was typing, my body starts having those zings to my breasts where it hurts. And that's my body's way of saying to stop. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna breathe through it, drink some more water, you know, see if I can just 
power through and then it turns into my arm really hurting and then um, after 45 minutes of trying to keep up with normalcy um, my arm I mean it, we're talking like seven hours later my arm's still sore but um, I got to the point where I couldn't eat with my right hand when I went to make lunch afterwards and my making lunch was like a salad it's not like I was making some big stew or something so there's just things that you have to keep in mind and I, I, I bring up the leave part because that's the business end of what comes with you know having surgery and working um, but just keeping on top of deadlines of when you need to notify people of things so like I said I tried being normal it didn't work I tried just resting for a couple hours after that and I'm like my legs still work and my abs still work so I'm gonna go for a walk and then went for my walk um, tried to have a normal pace I pushed myself too much today tried to have a normal pace and then within five minutes my boobs were like uh-uh and the pain just got too much I had to just stop and then come back up to the apartment and I needed help and at that point luckily my son was coming home so he was able to bring the mail up because I couldn't even hold the mail to get up the freaking stairs. Frustrating, but perfect example of listening to your body because your body is controlling everything right now. Like, it is not about my head. My head could want to go back to total normalcy. My body's saying no. And when it's shooting out these pains to you that are very blatant, you have to stop. <laughs> so, lesson learned. Now I know. And I'm on the floor. And I'll, I guess I'll show you how to how I maneuver because normally I'd use my hands and twist over and I can't do that. I have to use my abs and my lower half that works. So I'm gonna use my butt and scooch on over. I have a shoe here as a demo, my shoe. And I'm gonna show you, oh, don't tell me my favorite piece I don't have here. Crap, it's on the chair. Ah! All right, I'll show you what I have here and then I'll get the other piece. So here's what I got. The Council on Aging. Oh my god. <laughs> the Council on Aging. I'm just scooching over. The ca and again, not using my hands because my hands are kind of non functional right now, other, other than like this. The Council on Aging, I think like most every town has one, and um, they provide all sorts of services. Apparently, you don't have to be a certain age, or unless I am that age. I'm 49. Um, but my occupational therapist had said uh, to reach out to the Council on Aging for um, doodads that they have that could help me um, instead of like going out and like buying things or whatever. And they could have things that I don't even know that I need, which was very much the case. Um, so I came home uh, from my oncology appointment and came home to this bag sitting by my front door. So you don't even have to go there, they deliver it, at least ours did, they deliver it to your home. So here's what's inside. I have two grabbers and they're really good ones over on the chair. Um, let me sit for a few minutes so I can listen to my body and then I'll go grab it. Ah, grab it, ha, that's funny. I'm gonna move back a bit so that you can see what these things are. Um, all right, so here's one grabber that they gave me almost looks like a rifle but the end of it is very distinct it's got like a pointy part to it um so if you hit the if you pull this it does this so it grabs stuff but it grabs um differently than the other one i'm trying to give you good angles here of how it grabs and you really don't have to apply a lot of force i wonder if it's actually adjustable now that i'm looking at it um this little tab thing too again i don't know what they're like how they're supposed to work i'm just showing you like what i've used them for um this little thing here that's sticking out um i used this when i was taking down my son sorry i'm in a lot of pain right now and i need to adjust i need to adjust like these bras are great but like after a certain time each one of them drives you crazy for a different reason um, anyway, I use these to take down my son's birthday decorations, like even stuff hanging on the wall. Um, and this one is not adjustable height wise, but this thing was nice for laundry. Um, and my, my laundry I've done so far is I wash two bras. 
that was it. Um, picking up a heavy, wet clothing item is going to weigh more than five pounds, so I'm just not there yet. Um, so when I did laundry, I think what I did at the time was I used a hanger to help me pick it up, um, which was a little bit awkward because it was a little bit too bendy. But I wish I had had this because this at least you could stick down into the washing machine and just like shoop, and pick up the, uh, um, you know, whatever the clothing item is and then just carry it over into the dryer and then plop it down. So you have this part and you have this part, which the other grabber, which I'll show you in just a little bit, um, just has a different end to it. But this one has like teeth. My guess is that it probably is adjustable somehow. I just haven't figured it out. But you don't have to apply a lot. Like I said, my right arm really hurts. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure in order for it to work. So there's one handy gadget. I can't even like turn to get the rest of the stuff on the back. This is why you'll have abs of steel when the whole thing is done. All right, there's one. The next one I have, speaking of shoes, is a shoehorn. Um, it's funny because when my son went to his prom years ago, uh, I mentioned about having a shoehorn. He's like, what's a shoehorn? I guess a lot of people don't use shoehorns anymore. It's to help you put shoes on. Um, this has, uh, I'm not even sure how to use this because I, I actually haven't used this yet because the shoes I basically always put on, I slip on. Um, but I imagine this is to hold, it's probably to hold like this way, I guess. I'm not quite sure. But the point is that it gives you some distance, some uh, distance here. This is made of foam. And the way shoehorns work for you youngins out there, ugh, it's like everything I have to keep my arms to my side like this. You stick the, the it's, a, it's curved, as you can see this way, it's curved. You stick it in the back of your shoe. And then when you, <laughs> I can't lift my foot up, but when you put your foot in with this in, in it, it keeps the back part up so it doesn't get like squashed down. That's how a shoehorn works. So there's this one. Um, it's kind of, for me, it's kind of short, but they they also gave me this one, which is um, metal. Can you hear that? It's metal, it's firmer, um, but it has a string attached onto it. So this might be a better thing for me just because I'm taller. Um, again, same idea where Wow, I'm uncomfortable. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> uh, where you put your the shoehorn in the back of the shoe, put your foot in, and then like once your foot's in, you slide it out, and then your foot obviously it stays there. But I like this one because it's longer. It has this. I mean, this part is the same length, but it has a piece of string. The only part that could be. Sorry, it's really uncomfortable. The only part, um, oh crap, it just came untied. The only part is that in order to um, use this part, you have to pull it with your hand and or your arm. And the whole point of me with my surgery is that I don't, I can't be pulling anything with my hand. So I might even just like bend over and put this inside just to slip it and then just kind of wiggle it out but not like pull it hard from the other end. So those are just two different kinds of shoehorns. And oh my gosh, I'm not comfortable right now. So, whew, all right. It's probably from the moving. And I got this nice thing. Yes, it's a cane, but lo and behold, it's a tennis ball on the end. So what is it for, you ask? This does twist. I have to stop because, um, it does, I, I, I can't do it because all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I'm really uncomfortable. Oh, here it is. There's little, there's a thing on here to adjust it. So, oh, I guess not. I guess it was at its highest setting. There we go. But you can make it shorter or whatever with this thingy. Um, and I think these twist to make them longer. Um, I mentioned to her, uh, the director of the Castle of Aging, that... Um, at nighttime, when I go to bed, um, what I'm having a hard time with is that the two lights on the edges of my bed, which you've probably seen in videos, I can't, um, once I'm seated in bed, I'd have to twist to shut the light off. I tend to only keep one of them on. 
And if I use the light switch itself, it's not very far, but by the time I walk over to my bed, um, it's pitch dark. And the last thing I want is to accidentally like kneel on something or whatever, because it would hurt. Um, so she said, you know, they have this thing, which is like, you know, like a cane, but it has this on top of it. So I can sit from the bed and just go like, like flick. And for that matter, I probably use the reacher for that. I don't know. But the tennis ball is soft, so I can go like flick to turn the lights on or flick to turn the lights off and be able to reach that from my bed um, and then just put this next to my bed when I'm done. And, you know, it is adjustable. I just, I can't twist it right now because I don't know what's happening that it hurt. Well, I do know what's happening. I'm doing too much. So I'm going to talk fast and make this quick and over with. Um, this self-explanatory, it's a sponge on a stick which would help you wash your back. The thing with a mastectomy is normally you'd reach high to get to your back. I can't reach high. So although I could reach from underneath, ah, there we go, reach from underneath, which I can do. And then look at that, I can wash my back. Huh, just learned that. Um, well, that's convenient. I'm gonna do this tomorrow morning because I can't go up and over, but I can go under. And like, clearly I have way more mobility in my left hand than in my right. Um, it's unfortunate that my tumor was on the right side of my body. Because if it were on the left, I'd have a much easier time writing and stuff because I'm a righty. Um, but I have much more mobility in my left hand. If you notice me walking around town and stuff, I have a lot less mobility in my right arm because I had seven lymph nodes taken out and um, it hurts. So yes, this is for the shower. It's like soap on a rope, but it's sponge on a stick. All right, other things that are in there. Um, this to me is kind of old school, but I have it on my phone. It's called File of Life. Um, but the information on here, it's from Disney attorney, Marion Ryan. Um, you know, your name, address, emergency contacts, your medical data, what medications you're on, recent surgery, allergies, whatever. I have all that on my phone. Um, so I, I wouldn't use this, but like, you know, if you didn't have a smartphone or whatever, it's important to carry that with you. There's a big thing like this that comes in a little, um, in a little foldery thing. And there's a smaller version of it here. You can keep in a wallet or whatever. Um, but if you have a phone, it's on there too. And um, I actually use this once on my phone when I had my kidney stone. Uh, is that on your phone, you can enter into medical information. And when you hit, I think the home key, and even if your phone's locked, you can hit the home key and then um, I think like volume up or something. And it gives you the option of uh, entering into your medical information. <sighs> All right, I gotta move this with my left arm. So my right arm is out of commission. This thing, I have no honest idea what this is. <laughs> I think I could be wrong. I've been trying to sort this out. It could be for your knee. There's two of these. It could be for your knee to do something because there's like this foam on the bottom. And please give comments as to what you think it is. I should just call Allison and ask her. Then I thought maybe it's something with your shoe, like to help put a shoe on or something, but I think it's too narrow. So, but it's also too narrow for most people's knees. So I'm not quite sure what this is for, um, but again, it has pulley things. So for me, that not, might not be the best thing because using my arms is not, um, is not where I am. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask her. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, yeah, I don't I have no idea. I'm, I'm gonna have to just call her and ask her what that is. Um, she gave me a nice little card. Um, also in there was a uh, light, you know, like a night light thing so that you don't trip over anything on your way to the bathroom or wherever you're going. Um, oh, card that she sent me. So, um, yeah, super sweet. I love getting cards. Um, other stuff in here. Practical things. Tissues. Super practical. Um, I remember, especially with this process, like you do cry, 
especially when you're at doctor's appointments. And um, it's weird the amount of doctor's offices that don't have tissues in their um, offices. And if they do, they're like cardboard. So, uh, yeah, it's a, actually, I didn't even realize what they said. This says, find your fearless. This says, summon your strength. And this says, seize this moment. Obviously, not all the moments that you go through, but pocket tissues. Um, there's a stress ball from Vitra Health. I don't know what that is. Stress ball looks like a, well, it looks almost like a teardrop, <laughs> but whatever. Stress ball, which is not great for me right now, but um, just because of my, where it hurts. This super genius flashlight. Easy flashlight. Press the button. Woo! This will be a great, like, whoa, ha, 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 ha. Uh, nice thumbnail. Flashlight. Easy flashlight. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of this. This should be next to my bed. So part of the reason why I wouldn't have to worry so much about um, using the the tennis ball thing to shut the light off at nighttime, because you could just, like, I, know I learned this from camping. Oh, I could use my lanterns from camping, too. And just like put it on and then like I have that standing table next to my bed to shut it off. But anyway, I could put this on, leave it on my bed and that way it'll light up and I can see. And then when I go to bed, just like, you know, shut it off and put it on the table next to me. Um, yeah. She also gave me um, a book she recently read. I'm just reading this now. A book she recently read, including the other books... Um, hopefully something here can help you on your journey. So I'll just see what books they are. I mean, they're not the actual books. You just give me like pictures and a sleeve of what the books are, but I will share those with you. Um, I won't be able to get that back into the sleeve, um, but I'll share them. So one is called The Art of Healing from Ernie Siegel who is a medical doctor. Oh, and they're all at the library. That's handy. Because it's a picture with the, um, with the, what you call it, like the code, whatever, so you can easily find it at a, li at a library. Oh, is that all it is? It's all the same one, I think. Yeah, the art of healing. So, um, yeah, and there's a table of contents with each chapter. So I'll just say those real quick. So the Art of Healing, um, chapter one is the Doctor's Awakening. Chapter two is Source Significance and Validity of Symbols. Chapter three is the Power of Visualization. Chapter four, Dreams, the Brain's Creative Workshop. That's so interesting because I don't think, I usually have really vivid dreams I can't recall any dreams since surgery. I hope that goes away. I used to have really good dreams. Chapter five, drawings when conscious and unconscious disagree. <laughs> That's true. Uh, chapter six, interpreting the drawings. Chapter seven, animals, psychics, and intuitives. Like when I got all freaky deaky on you and told you about all the angels that were inside of the oncology office. Chapter eight, laugh out loud. Not ready for that because it hurts because of these things. Chapter nine, fake it till you make it. I tried faking it today, didn't work, didn't make it, but I'll get there. Uh, chapter 10, words can kill or cure. I can totally see how that's true. Glass half empty people, um, that's not what's gonna cure you. Uh, chapter 11, Choose Life. Chapter 12, End of Life Transitions. Not there! It is not my time. Um, I'm sad for people that it is their time. Chapter 13, Spirituality. Feed Your Invisible Self. I have gotten much more spiritual. Not just because of, well, really, uh, rewind. Because of this, yeah. Um, my other fun fact, my grandfather was a pastor. Um, I grew up Lutheran. Um, yeah, I would say like over the years I'd become more spiritual than religious, but then I don't know, as I've gotten older, older, 
uh, it's kind of moved back to the religious aspect of things. Um, granted, I only go to like church on holidays and the church that's been helping me is a Unitarian church. Um, but I do still go to a Lutheran church too. Uh, that's the one like for holidays and stuff. But I, I, I don't know, there's, there's some, for me, there's something of a healing, um, with a notion of thinking of a higher being. And, you know, whether you believe in that or not, I don't know, like, you know, even being a mathematical person, like you question things, whatever. But then there's just too many signs that I see out there in the world that there is some sort of higher being. Um, and it's not a matter of like a crutch, like people think of it. That's not how I see it. I used to see it when I was questioning, but that's not where I am anymore. Um, and really, you know, having something like cancer, the, 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 the word or the idea of faith, not in a religious way, but just faith of something existing that you can't see, see you can't feel, you can't touch. Um, that's what the tumor, at least for me, he was like, I can't see it. I can't feel it. Can't hear it. Can't touch it. Can't smell it. Can't taste it. Whatever else I'm missing, but it's there. Um, and I guess, and I guess in one way I can see it. What I see is abnormalities compared to what things are supposed to look like when you're looking at, um, uh, what do you call it? When you're looking at imaging and the doctors can see that. For me though, because I'm not like qualified in what I'm looking for, I don't know what I'm looking for. So I have faith in the people that are analyzing those reports that they're actually true. And that's where you have to have trust in other people too, because I don't know what I'm looking for. But clearly, you know, several, several, several people. So like it's just one person decides that you have cancer. It's a team of lots of people. They're looking at all of your imaging and stuff and and looking at you as, you know, externally and internally to see what's going on. For me, externally, there wasn't really that much to see. Um, internally, there was a whole story of stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, there is an aspect of faith and things that you can't see that are actually there. Uh, anyhow, moving on. Um, stay independent. Learn more about fall prevention, which isn't just for people that look like the age of the woman on the brochure. Because when I'm outside, like yesterday, for example, and I'm walking and I want to be able to walk at a speed where I look like I'm not, you know, 110, um, I'm not comfortable doing that if I don't have someone there with me. And even like when you're going like on a date with someone for the first time and you call a friend just to tell them like where you're going to be, um, it's the same idea where I need people to know that I'm going out for a walk right now. So God forbid something happens, please check in with me in, you know, whatever, 10 minutes. And if I don't respond, it means that something happened. Um, or, you know, go walking with a friend. With COVID, that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, for me, I mean, the fortunate thing of me living in an apartment complex is there's always people walking around. So God forbid I were to fall, somebody would see me. Uh, which brings me to the next thing they gave me, a whistle. Um, you know, wear it around your bracelet or your bracelet, wear it around your wrist. And that way, if you do fall, you know, I've fallen and I can't get up. So it's handy to have a whistle. And then the last thing, well, second to last, because the other one is the other grabber, which I'll show you in a second. Um, she sent a puzzle, which is super sweet. Um, because it's COVID, the first thing I thought of was like, crap, has it been opened by someone else already or not? I don't know, I'll find out. But she sent me this nice puzzle. Um, so I can, you know, spend some time putting that together. But the tough thing with me is it involves my hands. So I really look at this puzzle like as a not now kind of thing. It's a thing to work up to. Uh, it's funny because it's spring on Park Avenue. Um, it's a picture of, well, obviously Park Avenue in Manhattan. That's it's a thousand pieces. Um, and I'm from New York, but I look at this as more like a physical therapy kind of thing when, when I'm in a place that I can be manipulating my hands more and seeing how far I get. All right. <laughs> the grabber. I will show you that I can't get up with my hands right now because that, well, I could, but it would seriously hurt. So here's where I use my legs and become the poster child for Waverly schools because I'm wearing Waverly, my Waverly sweatshirt and my Waverly shorts. So I go up on my knees 
Ugh. And then he used my core and my legs to get up. There's my Waverly shorts. Um, to get the other grabber for you. So this is quality video when I'm not even on the video thing. But this grabber is awesome because I've used it already several times. It is very lightweight. Oh crap, now you get to see me come back down to the floor too. Um, again, using my knees and my core because I don't want to put too much pressure on my knees. Ugh. And then flopping down. This grabber is super awesome. This again has this kind of thingy on it. And when I do that, this is what happens. So I use this to take down uh, pretty much every decoration. I just, there was only one that I couldn't get with this kind of grabber because the teeth, if you look, are wider. Um, so if you're looking to get something that's, uh, um, I don't know, more fine at the end, this, isn't, this doesn't work out so well. But I use this for, like today I had to get a binder that was at the top of my secretary that there's no way I would have reached it otherwise. So even to get a binder, I used this and I held on with one side to uh, the, uh, the knob to open up the secretary. So I held on to it with one hand and then with my left hand, that's my stronger hand right now. And with my right hand, I just kind of like did this to help ease the door open. And then once I got it, I used both hands to grab the binder from the top. And it, you know, it, it, it seals like right close together. There's no gap there. Um, I don't think this is adjustable in, in length, but that's fine. Uh, but it's super well made. And I could see this working for clothes too. Um, the fact that it's curved, I imagine that there's probably other uses for it, but I just haven't gotten up to yet. But out of the whole bag from the Council on Aging, I'm extraordinarily grateful for Allison who runs the Council on Aging in my town. And we'll call her and say thank you. Um, <laughs> another reason too why I'm not writing thank you notes, because that requires me writing and I'm having a hard time writing. I have to save my arm right now this guy is um, really all I can do. So here is my grabber, and um, I'm gonna do one of each, I guess, because I haven't done my exercises yet, and I'm getting to a half an hour, and I need to stop so I can take Tylenol, but I need to eat some food first. So I was uh, kicked out of PT because I was doing too much. I said I kicked out. I was uh, discharged because um, it was just too much too soon for me. So the wall climbs that I was doing is just too much. Even doing this, like it, it, it hurts. My arms can only go up to a certain level. What I am doing that will help is um, neck circles, which is such a yoga thing to do. But the neck circles, they're great for your neck. I go five times in each direction. For now, I'll just go two. But when you get up here, holy cow, does that stretch stuff out? Like your skin is so stretched out there and going down helps with your back, and then you, you do that five times, and then you unwind. And even like going from the side, all your skin is just pulled. I mean, the amount of pulling that they do to your skin <laughs> to get the mastectomy and all the other stuff out and get to the lymph nodes, I'm in pain just thinking about it. There's so much stretching, oh my gosh. So a lot of that tingliness is, is the stretching of the skin from all that they did. So I have those, and then I just have like shoulder lifts. Ah, oh, that hurts. Five of these up and down. Why do these hurt so much? My armpits, that really hurts my armpits. And my armpits are so tender from the lymph nodes being taken out. So I'm not going even super high, but I do need to move them because if you don't, they'll become stiff. So there's my fifth one. And I do that twice a day. It seems like nothing, but it's actually a lot. Um, oh, and then my shoulder rolls, which it's gonna hurt, so I'm only doing one in each direction. <laughs> so you're going up, back, my shoulder blades really hurt, down, which hurts where my stitches are, where my drains are, and then forward, and it's like forward, I just bang into my, which I thought were my implants, but it turns out it's all swelling. And you do that five times forward, and then you go back, out shoulder blades, up, ouch, and then forward, and do that five times, and you're supposed to do that twice a day. I have to stop 
because that friggin' hurts. And I'd like to be able to eat a meal. <laughs> and I had to give my arms a break. It's just so crazy how it looks so simple and that hurts so bad. But I need to do it. And I also need to listen to my body. And my body's telling me that my hair is ready to come out. <laughs> but I need to take it easy. Um, I have to work my way up too because um, tomorrow's another football game. I am going to have help with that. Uh, have another bodyguard around me so no one bangs into me. And uh, Saturday is town day. I'm probably purposely going to keep my vlogs a couple days behind because I don't need you guys to know, to know where I am like on any given day. So by the time you see this, it'll all be done. Um, but Saturday is our town day. So there's like a parade and I'm only going for the parade to see my son. There's going to be a lot of people there. I can't be around people because of COVID. Um, I can't be around people because I don't want people accidentally banging into me. I need to find a spot on the parade route where there's like really hardly anyone else there. Um, and then I might stop by the booth where uh, the station where I work is. But um, that depends on if I can walk down there or not. Uh, my legs work just fine <laughs> and my uh you know my lower half works just fine but my arms don't and i don't have the endurance to do too much so with the football game and town day that's a lot in a 24-hour period so um if i saw you and i wasn't social don't take offense to it i'm gonna scoop my butt closer because i don't have the remote um that's why i wouldn't have said hi to you at um at bedford day so that's what I got for today. Um, again, share with people that you know going through all this stuff because even though you want to stay independent, reach out for help too. You know what? I, I wonder if I could do this. I wonder if I can shut off because <laughs> I can't reach right now. I wonder if I could shut off the thing with this. I don't know if the if this would work. Let me try. Eh. No, because it's not like rubberized. Well, that should be a thing to invent. So somebody out there, ooh, but this one's rubberized. Somebody out there needs to invent a stylus with a longer arm so that way you can shut off stuff on your phone. It's not working. I have to use my finger. Put a stylus on a really long stick. All right, I'm leaning forward. See you next time. Bye.